What's up guys? We're doing abdominal massage today. Hey, so we're gonna go through a basic protocol uh, and it's gonna be all up close work with a few camera changes to kind of give you different angles and stuff like that. Now keep in mind, this is just a basic protocol. This is to start out with somebody. Uh, there's not a lot of advanced technique in this, but for the most part, all abdominal massage is advanced technique because lots of people don't do it. Okay, I would say that if you ask the majority of massage therapists, it is not something they do often or at all. And so it is a skill that gets super rusty. Now, what is always paramount in these kind of sessions? Client communication, okay? Explain before, during, and after. And you will hear me do that in this video. You're checking in. And even though I know the person that we're working with today, uh, I am still going to be on the run that A game about checking in, okay? Abdominal area is extremely sensitive. It is a natural protective instinct that we have for our abdominal area. Um, it is unprotected as far as bones and heavy tissue, you know, stuff that's going to be, there's not a lot of connective tissue. There's not like a, 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 you know, a ligamentous net that goes across this or, you know, a bony cage like the ribs right above. So you have to be really conscious of the fact that it is an uncomfortable area for people. Now, goals for working here are wide and varied, and we will talk about those in the video, what results you can expect to get, why you use this beyond you know, just the, oh, well, I just include it because I like to make sure. That's a valid reason if you want to make sure you're including, like if you're doing a whole body session and it's someone who wants to make sure you know, all of the major areas are touched, well, you wouldn't skip the low back and the low back is just the posterior part of the abdominal area. So you would never be like, I think I'll just skip the low back. In fact, it's probably one of your client's favorite areas. An abdominal area, if introduced and done properly, slowly with communication can be an amazing thing for people who have never had it. Okay. Can help with all kinds of stuff. All right. At the same time, make sure you dial back your own expectations. It's not a cure all. Okay, it's not gonna, it's not some magic button that you can push and everything just goes away because you've never done it. Okay, <laughs> just because it's the first time they've had it done or what have you does not mean you're gonna get, you know, pie in the sky, <laughs> pie in the sky action or level results. Okay, you might, but I'm just saying, lower your expectations as to what you're gonna get. And then if you get better ones, hallelujah, you did. Okay, all right. So an abdominal massage, the first thing, as I always say, is going to be communication. You need to kind of uh, go through the area preemptively for any spots that are ticklish. So you can just use your fingers to kind of palpate through the abdomen. Um, under the ribs is usually pretty sensitive to pointed pressure. So you're going to want to use more of the edge of your hand as opposed to if you go like this, most people are going to be ticklish. Hence the term rib tickler. Um, you're, you, it's sensitive. There's a lot of nerves that are really close to the surface of the skin here and you know, are we're generally going to be protective of this area. So it's not something most adults have any contact with or have a stranger have contact with. And it's less right now, it's less of a direct into kind of motion. You're not putting a lot of inward pressure. It's more of a kind of stretch and pull. Or pull and stretch. Stretch and grow? I don't know. And then you kind of repeat the opposite direction. You can come across for some hip pulls. Usually I pull, put one hand on this side or abdominal pulls and you kind of situate your hand in between the ribs and the top of the iliac crest, so the top of the hip bone, which you can see really well on the model or on our model that we have today. So her ribs end right here, pelvis 
top of the crest of the pelvis is right there. So there's like a perfect space to get, uh, get a grip on and just pull across. And I keep this hand on this side just to prevent the twisting or if they're small like she is, you know, from that uncomfortable sensation being lifted off the table. Not too much pressure? No. Okay. And that's really important in the beginning. You want to check in often. And we're going to start with a little bit of, a little bit of oil. Jojoba. My singing, that's changed over the time. Good thing about jojoba is that it doesn't stain clothes because if I was using something else, when I dripped that just a little bit right there, it would now stain her clothes and she would be upset. This will just wash out. And so if you're going to be working with somebody who has clothes on, you're going to want to be extra conscious of the, of the oil and lubricant lotion that you're using. Make sure that it's non-staining or water dispersible. That's what that's called. can get up kind of high on the ribs and just pull down. And then repeat the same thing going up. And here's something that usually feels pretty good is to find the back of the rib cage, the lower ribs, and kind of line your fingers up in the actual grooves of the ribs or the intercostal spaces, and then just a little gentle pressure and pull. And then make sure it actually feels good. Does that feel good? Yes. Okay. And you're going to know if your client is uncomfortable because abdomen tenses up very easily when we're uncomfortable. So if you feel a lot of like, mm, and the abdominals reacting when you're pulling and stuff, you need to be checking in. So anatomy wise, what do we have going on in this space? Okay. Abdominal skin is loaded with nerves. Okay. It's going to be very sensitive. It's a natural protective area. We're very in tune with what's going on in our stomach in our intestines. And there is a lot of visceral sensation located with this area. And you have to be careful because there's actually animal studies that indicate too vigorous work here can actually cause inflammation. Now everybody thinks, oh, you know, manual therapy, massage, it's all about anti-inflammation. But you can actually cause, it's logical to think that you could possibly cause a flight or fight response here. And you could kick off some cortisol and some inflammation throughout the body by going at this area too vigorously. So it's not something we really want to do unless you're looking for that result. Now we'll talk about that another time. Why would we be, why would we be looking to cause inflammation? But there are legitimate reasons for that. Now, anatomy wise, Obviously we have the skin, the several layers of abdominal muscle, uh, the greater omentum, which is a fatty curtain that kind of hangs down. That's metabolically active fat. It's very good fat. Uh, it's a huge energy store, all that stuff. Below that, we have a membrane that wraps the intestine that I cannot think of for the life of me, what its name is, but we'll just drop it here in the video. It's the peritoneum. I remembered it as soon as the camera turned off. And then below that, visceral organs, you're going to have the small intestines, 
that are kind of located right in here. The stomach actually sits very high. So when you think of a stomach ache, you're actually feeling your intestines. Your stomach is actually very high. It's kind of right at the edge of these ribs here. And then you have the large intestine. So small intestines kind of snaking through this area, connects up to the large intestine, which ascends and then transverses or traverses, but it transverses across and then it descends and then obviously goes down into the colon and out into the world. Um, always remember that you're basically a tube on the inside, mouth, anus, all of that, you're just a donut. So I know it's an uncomfortable, it's an uncomfortable thought, but you are, sorry. All right, so once we've kind of warmed this area up, made sure that there's not anything really ticklish, some people are, and that's gonna prevent work here. You're gonna to have to warm up and let it be, and then try it again. You're gonna to have to build sens sensitization here to where it's not unpleasant to work. So now we are going to switch to some more pressure-based techniques. So instead of the pulling, we're actually going to start some, oh, sorry. Uh, but you can see how sensitive this is. Just a light bump will make you, make you jump. Okay, we're tuned up to protect our abdomens. So here, now you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about half moon, solar moon, mega eclipse. I don't know. There's a lot of mystique or I would call it bullshit associated with um, the direction that you need to work on the abdomen. Now they try and base it on anatomy that, you know, the col or the uh, large intestine runs this way and then this way and then this way. And that's where you get that half moon shape. But unless you're pressing really hard, probably uncomfortably hard, you're not going to be pushing actual food or anything through the intestine. Now people will sometimes associate this kind of massage with needing to poop afterward. That has not been my experience. I think it's anecdotal and anything that is any, any effect like that is going to be likely more that they were able to relax. And when you do that, that's rest and digest, your digestive system kicks in and does what it does best is turn food into well stuff. That's not food. All right. So pressure wise, we're still going to stay in a kind of a fluid motion. And this just transitions from the poles and gives their abdominal area a chance to warm up to the idea of being pushed on. Does this still feel okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the larger part of the anatomy there is that, uh, your large intestine has peristalsis. It uses musculature to push the food. So anything that you're doing here is not going to, uh, is not going to cause that to contract faster. You're not going to manually push anything through that tube. And so now these ones go really slow. Are you going to be okay with some direct? I think so. Oh, okay. So you're just going to start by just putting your, fist there and letting it rest okay, you can do both sides if you want and then very gradually switch to motion or introduce motion now when you get to the ribs be conscious that your knuckles None of that stuff digs into these bones. And then you have the xiphoid process right here at the end, which is the pointy end of your sternum. So you're going to want to give that a little bit of extra, extra space so you don't end up on the point of the sternum. Okay, and just come all the way around.
And you can go even slower than this. I do not recommend faster. And you'll likely see what we just saw there, some natural deep breaths. And because we're rebels, we're gonna work the other way. And in my experience on most people, it is more comfortable for them if you start here in the midline and go up. Make sure when you get to the ribs that you kind of angle the hand to where you're not pushing directly into them. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Okay. And now after you talk to them, you say, you know what, I'm gonna go down from this space to the top of your pants. Okay, so you define the area where your hand is going to be moving so that they don't get uncomfortable not knowing how far you're going to push down. And this is both men and women, but you have to be especially conscious, I think, sometimes with women. And that's especially true if you're a male therapist. You wanna make sure you let them know where your hands are going to be going, especially with a massage like this. This is a, this is a sensitive area. Okay? And so then when it ends there, you just say we're gonna do the exact same thing. Was that comfortable for you? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come back up. And then this is going to be cross pressure. Pull back. And then you can do some point pressure if you want. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Okay. Always check in every time you change technique. Make sure you check in. Not a lot of pressure. You're not trying to dig into the intestines here. Right there, if you pay attention to that area just above my index fingers, there is a pulse there that you can see. That is the abdominal aorta. Can you feel that I'm on that? Yeah. So even though that is a deep artery, it is big. Okay, it is big. And if you notice that you're on it because you're going to feel it, you don't want to just sit on top of that because your client is going to know also. They're going to notice that you're on a pulse point and you want to get off of that because it's going to feel weird. Do you care if I see if I can get that pulse point to show up again on the yeah, surface? So there, you can see the abdominal aorta, aorta pulsing. 
A little bit about diaphragm release. That is a kind of a bullshit term. So many of the things that we deal with are kind of bullshit terms. Uh, you're not gonna release the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a balloon-like piece of tissue that encases, it goes around three-dimensionally all the way around your ribs, sorry. Um, and so all that it entails is interacting kind of with the edge of the musculature here. And so you can say, can you take a deep breath for me? And then let it out. And then you can just go back to breathing normal. Having someone come up underneath your ribs can feel really weird. On a larger person like me, you're not gonna be able to do this. Okay, there's too much adipose and just too much tissue. So like if they're a bodybuilder or something like that where the muscle of the ribs and everything has been enhanced or is much larger, you're not gonna be able to do this. So the musculature is gonna keep you from doing anything very deep. On the average person though, you should be able to get a little bit of contact with the edge of the diaphragm. Now, why would you wanna do this? It's kind of a catch-all thing, and for some people, it's actually quite enjoyable. Is it a cure-all for anything? Absolutely not. I never get the idea that one muscle is to blame for anything, or even one area of the body. Okay, and then we'll end with some more of the relaxing pulls through there. And this is actually a good way if your client has started to doze or they're kind of, you know, they're kind of in that drunken massage state is that this is the time that you can speed it up and it will kind of activate the other side, the, you know, the fight or flight response in a very mild way. This is not, you know, it's kind of like get, we'll call it a mild cup of coffee, but you're just going to speed up a little bit. And by now the tissue here and the person that you're working with are uh, used to having this area of touch. It's no longer going to be as sensitive as it was when we started. Real quick, a lot of people will try and approach so as this direction. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Uh, so as is a back muscle all the way at the spine. So if you are know someone or if you've been told to do this or you get one of those things, what do they look like? Let me see if I have something. All right. So if you've seen those, the psoas hook or the abdominal hook, hip hook, whatever it is. No, bananas, okay? It looks like this and then you're supposed to like hook it into the tissue and then lay on top of it. No, this is a tremendous way to piss off this area and also possibly damage some of that vasculature that we were talking about. There are a lot of sensitive uh, pieces of anatomy through here, starting with you know your guts, all of the nerves, um, and a huge amount of blood vessels. So don't go digging in this area. And I know there'll be testimonials that say blah, 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 blah. There's better ways to achieve the results. Start with the abdominal massage you just saw and see if it doesn't make you feel better. So when we're talking about abdominal massage, where do the results come from? What can we expect to see? Well, whole body is generally a relaxing as you go through the session. It's gonna start off tense. Almost no one, and I mean this, almost no one enjoys abdominal massage the first time they have it, okay? It's very, very strange unless they've already done it before. So you have to make sure that you're introducing it slowly and you're taking your time because it can be super enjoyable. And I will point out that kids, generally love it. If you have kids, you know that one of their favorite things to have done is for you to rub their tummy when it's upset, okay? So it is a natural comforting mechanism. And that's one of the first things you'll see is people will relax, okay? The other side of this is that there are a lot of muscles, so our abdominals are all coming around and anchoring into the back. And so you can notice or get a drop in back pain on some people or like, oh, my back feels looser when I stand up. That's another good result that you can get from this. As far as things like colitis, inflammatory bowel, that kind of thing, it can be relieving if you stick to the slow, go slow, what is it, low and slow. Go low and slow, take your time. Don't try and do things. Don't try and say, oh, I'm gonna move visceral manipulation. I'm gonna move things around. No, you're not, okay? At best, at best, you might, if they're, bloated or they're a little gassy, you might be able to move a gas bubble from one side to the other. 
that's it. That's all you're going to do. And that might be enough relief for them. Okay. But it may also make them uncomfortable on the table if all of a sudden they have to pass gas because you've been rubbing their tummy. So think about that before you do things. Under promise and over deliver. So if you're not sure, just keep your mouth shut about it. Oh yeah. Abdominal massage. I hope you liked it. Okay. Basic tutorial. I hope this gets you comfortable trying this. Okay. Practice on some people at home. Practice on a friend, a loved one. Okay. Introduce yourself while you introduce someone else to these techniques. All right. If you like this, tell me down in the comments. If you want to see a more detailed uh, video, if you want to see more techniques for the abdominal area and more explanation of how and why we work this, what, you know, what can we actually do here? Uh, we will make sure to get that in the pipe to get a video out to you. But you got to tell me that you want to see that because all of these videos are made for you. Okay. I'm trying to help you be a better either self-care or better therapist or better whatever it is that you're doing with these techniques, helping someone. Okay. That's, that's amazing. That's why I'm here. And that's why I want you to be here. All right. You know what to do if you want to see more. I think at this point you should know what to do. And if you don't, then don't, don't subscribe. In fact, dislike this video, leave me an angry comment. That's fine with me. I, I like those. <laughs> okay. I will see you on the flip side.